Welcome to my sewing room. My name's Elizabeth and I like to sew smart. And today I thought because it's Anzac Day here in Australia, it might be rather nice to think not just about the men and women who served on the front and on the battlefields, but remember the women, the mothers, the grandmothers, sisters, aunties, who actually waited at home and made the use of anything they had at hand to create beautiful work. Now, I'm going to show you today um, what you can do with handed down doilies and, and piecework that came from your mothers or your grandmothers and I'm going to show you some really nice things that you can do with them. I had lots of doilies that were given to me as a wedding present that apparently my grandmother had crocheted and I had pieces like this. Now this isn't the exact piece I was just talking about but similar pieces I had like this and I didn't want them to be thrown away you know, when I'm not here. So I thought, what can I do that can be handed down that's a rather nice keepsake rather than just a handful of crocheted mats? And this is what I did. This actually is a bed runner. It's quite long and it's hanging off my table at the moment. And it's made up of just doilies. This piece here was a tablecloth. This piece here was a, 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 a napkin. And I've cut other pieces out and just filled in the blocks. And then I put it together and use some, actually this is I think barley lace, not expensive lace, just to put on the borders and join them together and it makes a really nice, this is double length and it makes a really nice little bed runner. You could always make it wider, I preferred it this width. So I did that and then after that I had some left over so I made this little cushion just to go with it. Now I haven't used anything really smart even on the back, you'll see I've used um, just a beige tone-on-tone -tone fabric to back the cushion with and even bound it with the same fabric because that, that was what I had in my cupboard and the object of this exercise is not to waste anything but to use what you're given and what you've got in your hands in your cupboard. Although I'm going to make a cushion cover, you could make a table runner. You could do anything you like. You can make a pillow for your bed. but I'm going to make the cushion cover because it's easier for me to demonstrate and the reason I did it for um, my bed runner and other things was because I we've got girls in our family who never saw what their grandmothers and aunts did and I've tried to incorporate a piece of hand crocheted uh, work in each of them just one little piece so they each get a part of granny's crocheted work now for this exercise you will need homespun fabric which is just plain fabric I've chosen a cream you will need a nine two 19 inch squares and you will need wads lightweight wadding the same size now I've joined my wadding I use everything up I don't waste it I rejoin it on smaller projects and you will need as I said one 19 inch square of the lightweight wadding two of the backing fabric for your doilies and then you will need 19 inches across your fabric which you're going to use to back your cushion and then a bit extra for your binding if you choose to bind. So to begin with I'm going to start laying out. Now if you like this kind of thing can I just remind you before we really get into this do give us a thumbs up and subscribe because it helps me to keep on going and producing all these little videos. That would be really great. So all I do just layer it, cut a piece off. Now I've got all kinds of, of doilies. If you can just hone in on that one a little bit, you will see this doily here is actually a tablecloth, but it has a piece that's not very good. So this is how I use them. I will cut that off and put it on a corner section somewhere like this. I'll put it on a corner section so I don't waste any of it and use it all up. So all I'm doing is I'm going to layer up pieces that I will press better than that, of course. This is just the example. And then I'll start building, putting my doilies all the way around. I'll probably use a center piece, which again is two doilies. But you can use anything you've got, a piece of a tablecloth or anything. And then I'll, because that's a hand sewn piece of fabric in the middle there, and it, it's uh, a little bit old, I'll pop another doily on the top of that. 
and I'll just keep building and building. Now the thing is you will have raw edges but you can just keep layering and layering until you get the desired effect. Once you've done that, my suggestion to you, this is the one I'm actually going to work on today, is that you take a photograph of how you've laid out your pieces and then as you move around, if anything should come detached, you've got your photograph to follow. So what I'm going to do now is move on to my actual one that I'm showing you today. This is just the example. Don't worry if your pieces go over the edges because you're going to cut them all off and square them up. I've cut roughly around my pieces. This was a piece I believe of a tablecloth. Um, somebody gave this piece to me actually. I've just cut roughly around the edges. Now you can do that because when you start to lay other pieces on the top you can cover those raw edges with a nice little crocheted piece and lay another piece on the top of that. Now that was a piece of a table runner or a table napkin. I've laid that square on there covering all those little bits up with that. This was a, a quarter of a doily that I had left so I'm going to put that into the corner. Very handy when it's a quarter because it goes nicely into the corner. I'm going to lay that on the top there and I'm going to put a piece over that. You can bring this up a little bit because fortunately the crochet doilies do stretch a little bit and you can leave it like that but I like just putting something else to give it a bit of deeper colour, a deeper shade on the top. So I've laid them all on top of one another. I've laid all my pieces down. I've used little pieces. There's a tiny weeny piece here that I've used bigger pieces, this piece is bigger, covered some up, cut some borders off some, use everything you've got, don't waste anything. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I will pin them all on, all the way over. You can use a little bit of spray adhesive if you'd rather, but use a 505, which is this one. Use that one because it's only a temporary one and you can lift your fabric up off it and put it down several times and it doesn't leave a sticky finish. So place all of your pieces wherever you would like them. As I said, just go for it. Choose whatever you like and what you've got. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'll show you how to machine them on. And when you've done that, you will hand stitch them all the edges down to make them nice and secure. And then you're ready to carry on with your cushion. So I've got my corner piece ready to go on. I have already stitched the piece underneath but I'm not attached yet, so I'm going to start with my walking foot ladies. Always use your walking foot because it stops it catching underneath. And I'm just going to follow the line of crochet, the heavier line of crochet. Let me just pop him out of the way. All the way around. Again. All the way around right to the end I'll just cut that off pull that back through and then I'm going to st stitch this one pin this a bit more securely and stitch that one on the top I will just ease it out a bit to there and then I will have to hand stitch all of these because you've still got the raw edge underneath here of the centerpiece I will hand stitch them all all around the floral pieces. Do that nice and securely. Don't um, worry if you've got a few bits over the edge as I said because we'll fix that up, we'll square it off and you do that with all your pieces and then you'll find that you've got a really nice cushion top. Remember when you sew them on you're only going to use the backing of the, you've got your homespun and your wadding. Don't put the other piece of back, uh, backing on because what you're going to do is in some of the pieces that are plain we're going to stipple quilt and that will go through all three layers and that makes that really nice and tidy. This is the corner that I was stitching on. I've stitched on the top there. You can see it's all nice and secure. I've hand stitched the lace on. The next step is to put all of this, this is your wadding and the top fabric and the pieces you've pinned and sewn on, onto the backing fabric. Now this, I've got some 505 on here so I can move it. 
Now you can see where my stitch lines were on the wadding for the pieces I stitched on and you'll see that there, even though I've got a semicircle there, I haven't on here, but that's because the next step, when I've laid it all down nice and fine, is I'm going to stipple quilt through the flat pieces of fabric and that will secure that. I'm going to do it in the little plain pieces and I'm going to do it, if you can see on here, these some of these tablecloths, because they're old, they're actually a little bit stretched and full, but if you can stipple quilt through them, then that gathers up all that extra fabric, all the loose pieces, and then they lay nice and flat and neat. So my next thing is I'm going to stipple quilt around the plain pieces and around here. Now if you don't know how to stipple quilt and you want to know an easy way of doing it, then refer to my handy hint number three and then you'll see a real easy way to do it. I've stipple quilted, as I said, all around this half circle. I've done a little piece in here, and right over to the corner. I've done another piece in this corner. If you come back over to the middle, the centre piece I had, that stood up off the fabric, it was a little bit full and stretched, so I've stippled all the way around that and now it has a really nice flat antique look, done a couple of other spots as well, and I'll just turn that over, and as you can see on the back, where I've stippled it, it's now securely fixed, the backing fabric on the top of the cushion is really nice and secure, and I'll turn that back over. I squared it up to 18 and a half inches, cut all my extra bits of um, doily off, and then all I did was, you can zigzag, I just have an overlocking stitch on my little machine, so I've secured all the edges so that when I put the backing on now, it will stay nice, nicely together, nice and firm. The piece you cut off across the fabric at 19 inches, you're now going to make your backing with that. Now, there's a fold in it, but of course it's wider than the cushion. So I'm just going to take my ruler on the fold and just cut that in half. Just take that little piece off there. And this makes two pieces a little bit longer. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold those back both in half, so that's one piece. I'm going to fold the other piece in. And how that's going to go on your cushion back is you're going to lay, we're going to lay that on our top until it measures the 18 and a half inches. Either put two buttonholes in or Velcro you can stitch on and we'll stitch that onto our cushion top but I'll show you how to do that in just a second. You will need two, also two, two and a half inch strips across your fabric for your binding. Now, if you don't want to bind, you'll do it inside out, but I think binding looks far nicer. So our next step is press these two back pieces and lay them on the cushion top. I've pressed my two backing pieces in half. I have trimmed the selvage off because I don't like it to be untidy. So this my cushion here, I've got it with the top just here. I'm going to bring the top flap over the bottom. So I lay the bottom one on, lining it up with the raw edge at the bottom. And then I'm going to bring the top piece and I've folded that again in half. And I'm going to line that up with the top. So you'll see there's a nice flap over. Before I stitch that onto the top, onto the back of my cushion, I'm going to put my two pieces of Velcro on underneath so it will fasten nice and securely and I'm going to put that on the back before I stitch this onto the top of the cushion. I stitched on my Velcro in the right place and I just used the friction pen to line it up. But of course when you stitch Velcro on, although I love it on cushions, you do get 
left with the top stitching on the outside. So what I did, because I thought this is going to be a gift, this cushion, so I put my Velcro on, just stick that down, there. I've stitched a piece of lace over the top and it makes a nice finish to the backing and looks quite attractive I think and it covers up the top stitching that I would have had from the Velcro. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin all the way around, that's the top of my cushion, pin all, all four sides and stitch around, all the way around and then I've cut, joined my binding that I cut so I'm going to stitch that on. Now if you have any trouble with your binding have a look at my handy hints number one and two and you'll see easy ways to stitch it on and easy ways to join it. So my cushion cover is finished, I've bound it and it's nice and firm. Now this is the edge, the fold over edge with the velcro on and you can see because this edge is the edge that will have a lot of handling and it just makes it nice and much stronger and firmer and that's really useful. I will turn that over and you can see this is the cushion on the other side and I'm really happy with that, I think it looks very nice and remember that you can put anything on so the girl who receives this one in our family, as I said it's a gift, will have a piece of Granny's crocheted mat and then the remaining girls, this time I've used tablecloth and put a piece of tablecloth on each one, there's three more here I've done, each has a piece of the tablecloth and that way everybody will get a piece to have as an heirloom from our grandmother. Now these doilies here, these were given to me, these are not um, from my family, but this one here is pretty good, it's a circular one, that can be used as a whole. But this one, in this one here as you see, has either an iron rust stain or a tea stain that hasn't washed out. So don't throw them away or don't put them away somewhere where they're never used. Cut it off and use it like I have as a piece on one of your cushions or table runners. And that way you'll preserve the majority of it and make it into something really special. And if you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have because I've had a lot of fun with it, so I hope you do too, then remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe and go and see my Etsy shop. Have a look in there. I've got lots of patterns in there where you can use the fabric from your stash. They're all easy and they're well demonstrated so you can have fun with them. And I hope that now you'll have an idea, something you can do as an heirloom. And next time we'll be doing another project, so I'll see you then.